Mudder Nation and all my aspiring world's toughest mudder friends. It's that time of year again where November is right around the corner. And what happens in November? That beautiful dance in the desert, world's toughest mudder. And I'm here with Merrill ambassador and friend, Jason Anton. Jason, what are we gonna do? Mudder Nation, how are you guys doing? Coach and I are here to give you guys the full rundown on how to be a successful pit crew, and then better yet, how to utilize that pit as a competitor on the world's toughest course. We want you guys to be successful. We want you guys to get through all 24 hours, and we want to see you in the desert for world's toughest mutter. Pit tips! So before we break down these pit tips for you, I think we need to get into some proper attire. Couldn't agree more. So then you can take us a little more serious. Ah, that's much better. It is. First of all, let's talk about you athletes. And a tip for you guys is time management. You wanna spend as little time as necessary in your pits. So basically, get in and get out. Yeah, absolutely. You've got 24 hours. And for a lot of you out there, you have a goal that you've set for yourself to be achieved in that 24 hour period. If you spend five minutes in the pit every single time you swing by, that's a big difference in spending 30 minutes. So be really strategic about where and when you spend those extra minutes. Because 30 minutes in the pit, it, over 10 laps is actually five hours. Yeah, it's huge. It's That's huge. five hours of sitting around doing nothing when you could be crawling through the mud and up and over obstacles getting your way to your goal. And who wouldn't rather be doing that than sitting in a nice comfy chair like we're doing right now? This is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Athlete pit tip number two is nutrition. <clears throat> One of the most important Snacks. things you can do out there is properly fuel your body. It's not rocket science and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You have to think of your body like a locomotive. Keep shoveling coal into that engine, you're gonna keep rolling. Forget, you're gonna start having problems. It's like a 24 hour all you can eat buffet and you wanna make sure that there's different things in there, salty, sweet, uh, protein, carbohydrates, whatever it is, cause your mood is gonna change throughout the night. I don't want baby food. I don't want jerky. And you never know what you're gonna be in the mood for. So you wanna come into your pit, quickly find what you're in the mood for, grab it, boom, pop it, and you're on your way. When you're on the course, obviously you need to have the right amount of calories, the right amount of water, but then there's also other important factors like electrolytes, sodium. So I have like a little bit of an electrolyte, amino acid, and sodium mixture that I've played with. And uh, I make it pretty simple for my pit crew is I have one of these Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I know it's not gonna be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, but when I show up, my pit crew reminds me to take my electrolytes. And I go, boom, and I've already pre-made these guys, bam. I'm ready to rock and roll. I can even wash it down with some baby food, and I'm on my way. Pit tip number three for athletes is listening to your body and staying ahead of that curve. Yeah. Years and years racing endurance events, there's nothing worse than, than getting deep in that hole. It's really important to forecast and think ahead and predict what you might need to do to prepare for a successful race. I like to forecast often. <laughs> I like to look into the future. <laughs> so look into the future and think about three major things. Number one, which you talked about earlier, is your nutrition. If you let yourself fall behind in nutrition, you're gonna start hurting fast. Number two is gonna be your temperature regulation. Out there in the desert, it goes from really, really hot water when you start to sub-freezing temps at night. That cold desert air requires a wetsuit and timing of those layers and that wetsuit is crucial to proper body regulation. And the last thing is gonna be foot and skin care, right? So you're, you're in and out of mud, you're up and over obstacles, you're jumping in and out of water, and guess what? The skin doesn't love that constant change. So an important thing to do is constantly look at your feet and make sure that they're warm, dry, blisters are at an absolute minimum, and you're nipping those things in the bud should they arise. Yeah, it's pretty simple. While you're out on course, you have quite a bit of time. Think about it, L listen to your body, pay attention to it. If you're starting to chafe a little bit, make sure you get lubed up on your next lap. And then also if your feet are starting to feel uh, tired or, or getting those hot spots, you can change your socks or change your shoes. I actually had three different pairs of shoes with me. I could go, oh, that's weird. I could go into the pit, grab a fresh pair of shoes, and I'm on my way out. And yes, they're gonna get dirty, they're gonna get wet pretty quickly, 
but just that momentary dryness is gonna really pump up your esteem Big time. and get you back on course with a smile. And you might not need to change into every single pair of shoes, but it's good to have that option. Plan ahead, forecast, and be on top of your game. So World's Toughest Mudder is an incredible experience for everybody. Whether it's the athletes or the pit members, it's a life-changing experience. So I just gave you guys some, uh, some great ways on how to improve and, and enhance your experience as an athlete on the course. Now let's talk about what it means to be a great member of that pit crew. Yeah, the pit is the true MVPs. They're out there for the whole 24 hours and they're the support system. They're the chain links. Mm -hmm. They're your lifeline to keep you smiling, keep you fed, and, and make sure that you have a successful experience. So listen up, pit crews. We've got some tips for you. So for tip number one, <laughs> for pit crew tip number one, it's really about morale mm -hmm. and boosting that morale and controlling the highs and lows of your athlete while they're out there on course. Yep. And it certainly helps to know your athlete really well when it comes to knowing exactly how much motivation and how much communication to be had during that race. 1,500 racers out there on the world's toughest course, every single different person has different goals and different needs for being out there. So it's really important for you as a member of that pit crew to know exactly what your athlete needs. Yeah, sometimes they need a kick in the butt, sometimes they need a hug. Maybe just a little dance party in the pit crew. You know, we had an amazing pit member last year, Sue. Yeah. And Sue took great photographs and put little motivational uh, chat. So each lap that we go in, like here's a picture of my wife and my wife's telling me to suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> so make sure that you know your athlete and you can do some cool stuff for them and keep them motivated out there on the course. All right guys, here we go with pit tip number two, anticipation. A lot can change out there on the Tough Mudder course. In fact, it's one of the most variable endurance events I've ever done. And a big part of making sure that you as an athlete and then you as a pit crew are a successful team is forecasting for the future and anticipating exactly what's gonna happen on that course and to your athlete. And if you get to know the course, there's a map out there and, and get to know where the obstacles are in relation to the pits, you can go out there and actually meet your athlete on multiple spots on the course and communicate with them. Coach, how you doing out there? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm doing pretty good. I'm a little bit chilly and I can feel some chafing. Maybe potentially you can have some gurney goo ready for me and my shell because this wind is really starting to cut through my wetsuit. <laughs> yeah, we can make sure, I can ensure you we, you have a well-greased undercarriage when you leave that pit. Oh, phenomenal. Thank you so much. So you can anticipate anticipate what they need for that next pit. And then you can prepare for when they get into that pit, have the right nutrition for them, have the right layering to make sure that that pit is nice and quick and get them back out of the course as quickly as possible. Gear. Pit tip number three, know your athlete's gear. And knowing your athlete is crucial in the world's toughest especially in that desert. It might be a really simple task running around that course as far as putting one foot in front of the other, but uh, it's pretty logistically demanding. And we've got all our gear right here. Now the pit crew should get to know that gear. And what I did was made a list of everything that is in the box and the pit crew member then familiarized themselves with that list. So they knew there's sunscreen, headlamps, toothbrush, lube, wipes, scissors, knife, Ziploc bags, trash bags, all the different things that we would need out there on the course. And that's kind of that staying ahead of the curve, right? Yep, stay ahead of that curve because you know, as much as we want to plan for the best, you got to prepare for the worst. Well guys, that was a great time. I'm, I'm really happy I had a chance to share a little bit of my experience with you and talk about how to be a, a great pit out there and some athlete tips. And I can't wait to see you all out there in November. Yeah, we'll see you guys in the trenches. We're gonna get muddy together. And pit crews, I can't wait to have a dance party with you in the middle of the night. Thank you guys very much for joining along. And you just got coachified. coachified.